It's time for the 1430 Connection on 1430 WNAV and 99.9 FM. Spotlighting news, newsmakers, and important community issues. Now, with this week's edition of the 1430 Connection, here is WNAV news anchor Donna Cole. Welcome to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me today is Angel Trainer. She is one of the most recognized names in the Anne Arundel County, Annapolis area addiction community. And thank you for joining me today, Angel. Thank you, Donna. Thanks for having me. You come at the opioid uh, epidemic that we are currently in the midst of with some uh, knowledge about this situation, some personal knowledge, some experience, yes? I do. I do have some personal experience with the opioids. Can you explain to our listeners what your background is in that way and then where you, how far you've come? And you have come very far. Thank you. So first and foremost in my life, I'm a person in long-term recovery. And what that means for me is that I've not found it necessary to use substances or alcohol, um, substances primarily being heroin. Mm-hmm. Um, for almost 10 years. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. The 33 years before that, though, all bets were off. Um, I was an active addict for 33 years. For 33 years? Yes. Oh, my gosh. You are, you're you truly, I think, lucky to be here. Yes? I'm blessed every day to okay. still be here. Yes. Tell me how you grew up. So I'm an Annapolis resident, Annapolitan through and through, um, have been here for over 45 years of my life. Mm-hmm. I was raised by a single mom that raised me with good values and morals and you know along came a stepfather that enforced those things I was resistant I'll just leave it at that Um, and you know at age 13 my my career with substances started Mm. Um, you know, Sorry, that mm, comes as a mother. Sure, so. sure. And it started out what I thought was just innocent. You know, it started out with a little bit of drinking and, you know, trying to fit in with my peers. Um, and never, ever, when I took that first drink at 13, did I think that age 46 that I would be at rock bottom and that I would be where I was. Alcohol is, or weed, not necessarily gateway, right? Um, For you, it was, maybe. Well, I think for me, the gateway was that I really just wanted to fit in with those people. I wanted wanted to fit in with my peers. Uh Um, And it started out, you know, looking back on it, it started out innocently enough. For me, the the disease definitely progressed. To the harder drugs. Absolutely. Um, You have since become certified in a number of ways to help other people. Explain that. I am. I, you know, when I got clean and sober, I really had to kind of recreate my life. And so I went through a process of going to college and I've gotten some degrees, addictions counseling, things like that. But what I came to realize is that I'm not the type of girl to sit behind a desk. Mm -hmm. Um, I would much rather be out in the community, boots on the ground. And and that's what I do. Um, And you've been through it and you can help others, which is a big deal. Some sometimes people are a little reticent, reluctant to get help believe others that haven't been through the trenches that's right yeah you've honestly been through the trenches i have rock bottom how did you pick yourself up from rock bottom uh you know everybody's bottom is different um for me it just i had i lost everything because in that 33 years you know i i did some stuff i got married i bought a house i built a very successful business raised my children some foster children but at the end it was gone all of it was gone and I found myself very alone um, not really knowing what to do so my my choices at the end um, were really to take myself out to to commit suicide Um, and you did attempt suicide I did attempt suicide and you know there must have been a higher calling for me because it didn't work that day and i you know i went to rehab and it just came to the point where i just couldn't do what i was doing anymore did rehab initially work the last time i went yes that, the see, first that's, three that, times i went no that seemed like a surprise to you that i asked you that question it's not really all about the rehab it's about the continuum of care uh-huh. you know and and the to me today the continuum of care starts with prevention and then if you know if you can't catch them there then you have to go to the other end in recovery support services it's all about the continuum of care okay so first three times rehab did not work correct because i wasn't ready I didn't I didn't listen to what they said I still thought I could do it by myself so rock bottom there is no time limit on rock bottom rock bottom could last a long time it could last a very long time absolutely 
All right, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, more about Angel Trainer and what she's doing to, with her personal experience to help everyone else out there that is going through recovery issues and rehabilitation issues. This is Donna Cole on the 1430 Connection. We will be right back. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. I'm in the studio with Angel Trainer, who comes with some vast experience, 33 years of vast experience in the world of substance abuse, and now turned that around and is helping others with their substance abuse problems. I just told her over the break, I think more needs to be talked about with why some recovery doesn't work, uh, recovery or uh, rehabilitation right. doesn't work. And you said... Well, because people think that when when you, when people go into rehab that they're fixed, that they're cured, and that's just not the case. Um, it it's can, a long term. It's it takes a long time and for somebody it to get there. Takes several visits. Actually, I just read about or saw a show about a group in Seattle that's doing these very challenging mountain climbs with addicts. So you're going into a. Uh, do you know about this group? I do. I, I just think it's the coolest thing ever. From the bottom to the top. Yeah, exactly And I do right. know about that organization. I've met um, the people that run it. If so, only we had amazing. some mountains in Annapolis, right? <laughs> but there's other challenges. You are involved in a number of different ways. Let's talk about Serenity Sisters. Mm -hmm. Serenity Sisters, um, we have been in existence since 2012. And what we do is offer supportive housing um, for those people that are coming out of rehab that are trying to rebuild their lives. All of my locations are right here in Annapolis. And you have four houses for women, one for males. Is that what? Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. Long term, short term, various. It it all it varies because everybody is different. Um, you know, I've had some people come in, be there six months, and then they go on their way and live happy, healthy lives. Um, others, it takes them anywhere from twelve to eighteen months to get to the place where they feel like they're ready. I'm very person centered, okay. um, and I want to make sure that they feel like they're ready to go out into the world. Fair enough. Uh, to get back to that idea with the climbing of mountains, we don't have mountains, but there's other ways to challenge individuals physically as well as mentally. Is there any of that sort of uh, program in the works now or thought of in, for the future? Well, you know, my, my personal belief is that by helping others, um, not only do we learn about ourselves, but we learn about the world around us. Mm -hmm. And um, and that can be very challenging. And I, you know, I encourage my people. and. Pretty much if you're within a five foot radius of me, I will challenge you and encourage you to go out and help somebody else and go out and help your community. Absolutely. Great. Uh, yeah, it's part, it's important part of the process, not just for the addict, but for the community to know that this is a person that's getting better and that wants to get better. And that Correct. brings me to my next question. Before the opioid epidemic hit as the numbers that it has, uh, there was a lot of fear and there still might be, not in my backyard, with some of these homes that are providing help to the uh, to those that have addiction issues. Absolutely. NIMBY, not in my backyard. Exactly. It's, it's alive and well. Um, the stigma is out there. And, I, you know, I just, for, for my own organization and for myself, I just take one step at a time to show the community that, you know, we do, we do get better, that we can come from paths that are not you know my past is very colorful I'll just leave it at that <laughs> um, but you can come from a colorful past and you can go out into the community and do good things well it's interesting too I think part of what this the epidemic has done to uh, illuminate the issue is shown many of us that there is no there there is no one type of addict they come from every background racially economically you name it it's there is no poster child for an addict there absolutely is not. Um, addiction runs across all socioeconomic planes. Um, it doesn't matter where you come from, whether you come from the bottom or the top. The addiction is there. And, you know, the belief that it's it's never going to be my child, it's not my child, that's not true. Because it absolutely could be your child. Um, so you know. I guess my question with regard to that, has the NIMBY uh, stigmatism 
so slow down because people are realizing that this could be their child or is their child. With the epidemic being on the front pages, how can we not know about it because it's right in front of us? Um, I think that it is raising awareness. Um, I believe that there's a ton more work to do in the community um, to get people to understand how they can help, where they can help. It's going to take some time, yeah. but the stigma's still there. Yeah. It just is. All right. When we come back, how they can help, where they can help, and ASAP. Yes. Okay. We're going to take another short break. This is Donna Cole on the 1430 Connection. We will be right back. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection in the studio with me today is Angel Trainer, who uses her vast experience with addiction mm -hmm. to help others that are addicted. Uh, I just asked her over break, do you take in others in the uh, Serenity Sisters homes, which four of which are for women, one is for men, all in the Annapolis area. You take others from other counties. So if people, as they do, are listening from Queen Anne's County, need yeah. help. Contact yes, you. Absolutely. They can go right to our website, which is www.serenitysistas.com. Uh, and there's there's a form right there where you can fill it out. And the emails come directly to me, and I will respond. Okay. Perfect. Sistas, by the way, S-I-S-T-A-S, -S, Yes. Um, which I love. ASAP. What does ASAP mean? ASAP is the Annapolis Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition. It is a community coalition. Um, we have been up and running for a year now. And what we do, we're a committed team of people. Law enforcement, community members, organizations, you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. We are committed to spreading the word of prevention efforts um, in Annapolis City. I, you know, when I was approached with the idea, I was on board. Because while I work in the recovery end of it, I am a very strong believer in prevention. And I believe that we need to get that messaging out to, to our children so that we can kill the, the epidemic in the other end. Um, you know, my belief is no new users, mm -hmm. no new users. And wouldn't that be a lovely world? Oh, my gosh. Um, what you, age are, are we seeing children? I, I don't really want the answer to this, but I have to. What? I, can, I can tell you that the youngest overdose call in Anne Arundel County, and this has been within the last two months, has been 12 years old. Which yeah. is one of the reasons that ASAP is so committed to um, to go, going out and talking to kids. So, you know, I, was that fatal? It was not fatal, thank goodness. Okay. All right. um, but we're you know working with the police department in mobile crisis. I get the numbers every day. I know what the numbers are in this county and in this city, um, and they are they're, they're not pretty. They're that's, just not. By the way, that's middle school, folks. That's not high school. No, absolutely. Adults. And, you know, I go into high schools and I've talked to some of the kids there. And some of the feedback that we've gotten is this is all fine and good, but you should have talked to us in middle school. And so is it starting? Is that starting now? It is starting. Um, with ASAP, we, you know, we've done we've done some surveys with some kids concerning alcohol use, misuse crashes um, and and opioids and you know they don't the kids have no idea what binge drinking is um, in fact most people don't understand what the definition of binge drinking is um, and if you don't know it is four drinks per hour for a woman five per hour for a man that is considered binge drinking um, you know we've looked at the car related crashes in Annapolis and, and where I, they're most prominent I have seen one and that's a little scary because the police, because of the health information, are not allowed to release that this was a heroin-related or an opioid-related crash. And so we don't know that this is happening. Well, and, and you're right. However, um, we, you know, we have joined with this partnership with the Annapolis Police Department. And for me, it's such an honor to work on the good side with the APD. Right. Um, and and they're they're coming around, um, and they are working with us. So I, you know, I have to give them their props. They have a hard job, so I give them their props. It's for a delicate what they balance do. for a lot of people. It's a delicate balance for educators because do you want to put this stuff, this knowledge, in front of the kids, or do you? I mean, you're introducing some of them to this thought process, right. and same for the health the the health information that goes along with some of these overdoses and accidents. It's how do you separate confidentiality with 
Well, and that that part I leave to I leave to law yeah. enforcement. But I, I can tell you that going into the junior high schools and even going into elementary schools, you know, there are prevention messages that can be put out to an eight year old. Things like you don't take somebody else's pills. You only accept pills from your mom Mm -hmm. or your dad. You know, you can start very young with that messaging and and instill those things into them. Um, And I think that the more parents are aware of some of the things that are going on here and the more they talk to their prescribers and their pharmacists about the problems with opioids, um, you know, that they can they can pass that on to right. their children. And the, the same with, with drinking, with binge drinking and underage drinking. You know, a lot of people see that as a rite of passage, but really the bottom line is that if you're not of legal drinking age, it's illegal. Right. You know, and and so some laws have been passed. Um, the Alex and Calvin law that's been passed. You know, and I've I've talked with our state's attorney about that. And that law was passed because there were people that were given underage people to, uh, right. alcohol. Final topic: recovery and Arundel. Well, if we could go back just yeah, to ASAP, ASAP just yes. for a minute. Yeah, absolutely. So our monthly meetings are every third Tuesday at the Annapolis Police Department from 12 to 1.30, and we encourage you to come out and be part of the solution. And there's when no it comes end date in sight for that. Those are ongoing. Well, okay, again, days? Every month, the third Tuesday of every month okay. at the Annapolis Police Department on Taylor Avenue, yep. and we start at 12 o'clock and we end at 1.30. Please come and join us. Very good. Oh, oh by the way, also safe firehouses we should mention safe stations sure i think that the county executive and the chief of police are brilliant in putting this into place i know for a fact that so far and and it's only been up and running since april but i know that 90 people have walked through the doors and not just firehouses police stations too or is it just is it's police stations too however most people that are seeking help are not really willing to to walk into a police department but a fire station that's that's more of a neutral zone for them Um, and they can you can walk right into any firehouse in anne arundel county or Annapolis City and tell them that you need help um, for substance abuse. 90 people and, have done that. That's amazing. Yep, 90 people. Um, and the numbers are working so far. It's only been a few months, but there's a team of committed people to make that work. Recovery and Arundel. Mm-hmm. That's one of my other hats. That's on the that's on the recovery end. Um, we again a committed team of people that that just want to get the word out and and break the stigma. Uh, we have four signature events every year. Hoops for Hope. That's with the Oops. county police department and a group of young men in recovery. Um, we have recovery over dinner, which is typically held at Two Rivers in Pasadena. Those two have just passed. Mm-hmm. Um, upcoming, we have International Overdose Awareness Day, which is August the 31st at Arundel Christian Church in Glen Burnie. Okay. Um, doors open at 615 for that event. And then um, one of my favorite is the annual recovery walk, which happens this year, September the 23rd. Uh, we start and end at the Stanton Center down on Clay Street. Yep. So September the 23rd, um, and we are opening the doors at 11 o'clock. More information about all this is available where? That you can find at www dot recovery org. okay do you have a facebook page also somewhere that people can find out more information about serenity sisters yes you okay. can find serenity sisters on facebook okay absolutely you can wow angel thank you for being here i'm really glad you've made it past all your battles and give back the way you give back thank you thanks for having me anytime this is donna cole on the 1430 connection i will see you next week <laughs>